Hey guys, um, me and James again. Um, we would like to hit another like target if possible. If you could help us hit this like target, we're going for 30 likes on this video. So if you like the content, you want to support us with the algorithm, drop, scroll down, hit like on the video as well. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers as well. I want to say when this comes out from 929, it would be great if we could get to 940 by the end of the week. That would be really good. About 80% of you watching our videos aren't subscribe so it would really help us a lot scroll down hit subscribe hit the bell as well if you want the notification um for when these predictions videos come come out as well um james you want to add anything to that guys just please when you when you do watch the video if you haven't already subscribed subscribe if you have subscribed like the video comment on, on the video it makes a big difference for us you know try to get the channel where we want it to be anyways Thank you for that. If you've done it, if you haven't, get down there and do it. But we'll get on to the predictions now. James, game week nine is in the books. And obviously, just having a look at how we did, somebody turned their form around a little bit. I got managed to get eight out of 10 results correct uh, compared to, to weeks before where I was on like four and five. Great to pick up those extra different ones. Also, correct score for me, which I'm happy with the Bournemouth Wolves result. For you, not so hot. Able to get five yeah five correct results out of the ten one correct score which you got to be pleased about with the sheffield man united any of the results stand out to you i mean just for me that newcastle palace scoreline sticks out like a sore thumb and james villa really laying down a marker against the good west ham side what what stood out to you for game week nine um if if everybody goes back i literally predicted manchester united's game word for word what was going <laughs> to happen you know it was going to be a scrappy game you know and then like man united get a late winner and that's what um ha happened there but overall poor performance by me i feel like i kind of went my old route and just go just go hell for leather would, would it be a like think about go for some risk and it didn't pay off you know the city wouldn't be like oh, you know that's easy points there but yeah, you know, just got to claw it back now. Jack, I've given Jack the lead. I'm going to claw it back. I was going to say, if we if we check where we're at, if I can get my mouse under control here, I have managed to get that three-point lead back. However, if you've been following us over the last couple of weeks, you know how quickly that it will be for James to claw back if he has a good week. So I'm on 64. James is on 61. Let's see how we line up for game week 10. James, we'll start with you here for the uh, first match of the game week. We've got Crystal Palace versus Spurs. Spurs looking pretty impressive. You've got this one, though, as a draw. How do you see the Arsenal North London rivals struggling away at Crystal Palace? I'm um, just looking at the history of, of this fixture. It's quite dominant. You look at team's history lately. Spurs are absolutely flying four wins out of their last five on beating this year. Top of the league, two points clear. Uh, Jack, I think I'm hating. I really do think I'm hating. because Let me not lie to you, Jack. Tottenham are good. But again... They haven't played, I don't think, I won't say they haven't played great opposition because they played Arsenal, they played Liverpool, you know, but it's like they played a lot of teams that you expect them to be. London Derby in the game, the Crystal Palace to me are up and down. Yeah, up and down. Hasn't been a great year and I feel like that they are going to go on a run at some point. They do have the players capable of, of troubling them. Am I hating? Yeah, Tottenham a little bit. Yes, I am. That's why I'm going to go for a, a draw. But I just like to think away from home that Crystal Palace can find a way, yeah, yeah, can find a way yet yeah, to get that um, point. So I'm going to be a bit nice right here to myself and say, please, Tottenham, don't win. That's my only thing. Look, James, I, th I think that confidence, even if it's false confidence, is still confidence. And I think that you mentioned everything there. Spurs are unbeaten. There's not a single loss in the in, in the L column there at all. I think it's two draws. Rest of the games are wins. Yeah, OK, a lot of those wins are against some, some slightly poorer teams. And obviously, we need to see how Spurs do against some tougher opposition as it opens up here a little bit more week on week. On week. But James, even this false confidence that they seem to have going at the moment, the likes of the way Matt Madison are playing, the likes of the way Son's playing, Richarlison getting a little bit of a lease of life on, on, on the left flank as well. But Doji looks like a nice player. Saar is looking good. Van den Ben looks really, really good. And James, the goalkeeper, Vicario, looks good too. So even if it's just temporary, I think that Tottenham just want to ride this. And I do think they'll have enough to, to get through against this Palace side. That's, I right. mean, if, if they do, it's been a phenomenal start from them this season. 100%, 100%. And one, James, I don't think you and I are particularly called anyway. We'll move on to Chelsea versus Brentford. James, I'm liking this. Two differences over our first two games. Why have you got Brentford snagging the draw against Chelsea? 
because I've seen the game against Arsenal and as well as Chelsea played, and I hate this notion that they dominated Arsenal. They didn't dominate Arsenal. They played well. They were better than us. It wasn't outstanding, but they were really good. They were quite impressive. But my issue with Chelsea is that they don't kill teams off. And the fact that you don't kill teams off, you, you like you're gonna give teams the opportunity. And, and to me, the quality of the Premier League, yeah, shows you that any team can take chances any time. And just a team like Arsenal, we were able to do that. A team like Brentford, to me, they have that unpredictable factor about them. They have players that can do things like out of nothing. They have that surprise factor about them. And to me, Jack, you look at their recent history against Chelsea, Jack. It's been quite confident. They're quite confident going to Stamford Bridge, believing that they're gonna get something, Jack. So again. As good as I think Chelsea's going to play in this game, they they don't kill off games and they're going to leave them in there. They're going to give Brentford a sniff. Once Brentford find a sniff, I like to think that they're going to take their chances. Like um, um like Arsenal, that's so again, I'm having Chelsea sitting on, a, on another 2-2. Um, I think Chelsea are going to take a lot of confidence from that Arsenal game. A game, James, they probably should have won. I think you're 100%. right. They didn't dominate Arsenal. I think anybody saying that didn't watch the game. Um, but they, they were the better team um, and should have won that game. I think they're going to take a lot of confidence from from that, from from beating a... a from. <laughs> You know, being should have being in a position to should have beaten a, a real title contender, and then just how this team is slowly starting to develop. We're starting to see some stuff happen here going forward. We're starting to see just a handful of starting eleven position uh, 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 positions on the pitch that need replacing before this team can really get rocking and rolling. <clears throat> I just think Chelsea will get into the swing of things here a bit. Maybe they get a lucky goal. Maybe it's a penalty. I don't know. But Brentford, yeah, it's not been super impressive. And I think we've seen over the last few weeks, they're missing Ivan Tony. There's the odd win here and there, which, you know, again, it's a well-coached side and it's a good football team, but they are missing that X factor and, and that individual talent to, to take them over the edge when they're not playing so well. So 3-1 for me, relatively dominant at, at Stamford Bridge. James, we're talking about your team. We'll let you go first here. Arsenal with the draw against Chelsea last week. Sheffield United coming off that unfortunate loss against Manchester United as well. Pretty convincing 3-0 win uh, here. Anything to explain here apart from a class difference? Just want Arsenal to make a click, Jack. I just really want us to finally have a game where it's scintillating from start to finish and especially a team against Sheffield United who are tipped to go down. It's a game at the Emirates and to be fair, a lot of games at the Emirates this season have been very difficult for Arsenal. Yeah, granted, if it's not on Forest or Fulham, we we, like, we found it difficult. I like to think, you know, especially with the confident uh, win away from home against Sevilla um, this week that we can go at home and, you know, and go back and like and like get back to win ways with a confident, not just a win, a confident win against Assad, which we haven't done in a, in a, in a while, Jack. Um, James, yeah, we know what this game is going to be. This is going to be low block. This can be two banks of four, maybe bank of four, bank of five. Um, we, we know what this game is going to be. Um, I think Arsenal will probably struggle for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, but whether it's penalty, whether it's set piece, individual brilliance for, from a Martin Odegaard or from, I don't know. Kai like Gabriel Adam, Jesus. Gabriel Jesus, um, you know, uh, maybe an Eddie Nketiah, the Kai Saka, whoever, whoever. I do think Arsenal will be able to break this Sheffield United team down at home. I think it's going to be a relatively drab game to watch. Not super competitive. No goal threat, really, from Sheffield United. Only way I can see Sheffield United getting anything from this game is either Arsenal don't score at all and we get a nil-nil or we see something a little shaky from David Raya but 2-0 for me relatively convincing um James you and me uh kind of copying each other here a little bit Bournemouth Burnley two of the more kind of struggling teams some reports with Iriola potentially getting sacked here soon as well I mean James is this just two kind of teams fighting for their lives here and, and cancelling each other out yeah you know and uh, guys I'm not gonna lie to you I'm going to tell the truth now. That wasn't my prediction. Um, I got one of my boys, Jed, who predicted the last four or five games for me because we, me and Jack were in the chain, what you got there? And, and I asked him, what you think? And I got majority of the, um, not like the first three, but the rest of them, majority of them, it's it, it, um, it's him there. And he's just talking about, you know, two teams, which is really that sort of lack of quality, you know, not really, like, like think about it, not really having that sort of ability to find themselves. And Jack, this might, like, might be a game for both teams to get a bit of confidence and, like, get a win over the line. But the thing I'm mainly looking at is, Jack, just the lack of ability in the final third, you know, to really, really hurt each other. I can see them both cancelling each other out and just it's being a, you know, stale, uh, common Saturday, three o'clock kickoff, one all game. Even might be nil nil. 
the the three o'clock Saturday game really does kind of tell you all you need to know. I will just say, everybody, James needs kind of a team. He needs advice when making his pick. My team's right here. My team's right here. It's all I need. It's all I need. But like look, my prediction is like five minutes before every video. I'll be honest with you. But I um look. I, but they're I, always good though. They're always good. They are. I always I I agree with almost everything James said there, you guys. Um, again, it's two teams. We could you know give it six months, give it a year of proper coaching, proper training, bringing the right players in. This could be two future Brightons we might be looking at with the management they've got and and, and you know the optimism going forward for for the play style that both these teams want to play with. But that's not where we are right now in October 2023. So yeah, a bit of a drab affair that one. Um. James, uh, Wolves, Newcastle, both got this one by a two-goal margin. I've got Wolves being able to score a goal. You with the clean sheet. What do you make of this one? Um, to be fair, Gary O'Neill came on to Monday Night Football and he was so impressive. Listen, like listen to the way how he sets up his team and like how he wants him to be aggressive in the, in the pictures that he was able to get um, um, from the previous game. Jack was, was, was so impressive there. But Jack, this Newcastle team, they're playing with confidence. And when you're playing with confidence, you believe you can go anywhere and play with that swagger, play with that belief that we can win. Do I see a goal going in for Wolves? Yeah, you know, because they do have that ability with players like a Pedro Neto there, who just, to me, it's just been absolutely unbelievable. Once again, guys, it's not my prediction. This is Jet's prediction. I'm going to go for what he's saying. But you're just seeing how comfortable Newcastle have been so far, how much they've been flying so far. And in, 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 in Eddie Howe loves a clean sheet. So 2-0 Newcastle. Yeah, look, I, I, I think, again, um, and this is funny because obviously I made a joke about not bringing up Sasa Kalatsic and then who scores the winner at the weekend. For me as well, to get the correct score and give me the bonus point for, for, for the for the Wolves We should game give Jack week. a bonus point when he mentions Sasa Kalatsic and he does something positive, <laughs> you know? like. <laughs> but again, James, to me, it's just more evidence of what a proper number nine and an actual striker can do to a team that's crying out for a number nine. He needs fitness, he needs confidence, he needs game time, he needs all this stuff. But I'm a big believer in this guy. And again, I think he proved at the weekend what he's capable of doing. I'm hoping that it starts to click and that we see something. Maybe he's the one who gets the goal. You mentioned the likes of Pedro Neto. We know how talented this Wolves team is, can be, all this kind of stuff in terms of developing talent, the relationship. Um, that the Wolverhampton Wanderers front office has with agents in Portugal. We know all of this stuff, right? Jorge Mendes, these kind of big names in football, which it's good to have a good relationship with. However, you're coming up against a very confident Newcastle side who are doing things like beating Paris Saint-Germain. And again, this is all trending. And it's all trending in one direction uh, for for, for this Newcastle team. James, January transfer window, summer transfer window, this team's going to get better and better. They're going to be spending more and more money. Is Eddie Howe going to be there? We don't know, uh, as certain other managers become available. But as it seems right now, an away trip to Wolverhampton, not going to be a problem for them. Um, Next up, West Ham unfortunately got humbled a little bit by Aston Villa at the weekend. And Everton gave a relatively good account for themselves. And James, prior to last weekend, based on XG minus uh, the, the, the minus XG, Everton are fifth in the Premier League table based on expected goals and that analysis. Interesting thing to bring forward. But West Ham, Everton, you got it's 3-1, I've got it's 2-1. Why such a dominant win for you by West Ham? Um, I just think West Ham have been, has been fantastic this season. Granted, yeah, yeah, Jack, you know, Villa's absolutely fine. And, and then you're right, they got humbled there. But I just look at this Everton team. Jack, you mentioned that XG thing. And I go, this is why I don't believe in stats. Because majority of the time when you watch this, this team, I'm thinking like, what? Like, seriously, what are we getting, you know? Um, a team that, to me, should be challenging for the top four. And the fact that they're lingering in, in, like, in and around that area in, in everything let, lets you know where they're at at a football club. The only issue with them is that could they get relegated? But the, but the good news for them is that, in my opinion, there's three worst teams in them in the Premier League um, right now. West Ham, to me, have been really impressive this year. And, 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 and like the likes of Jared Bowen, James Ward-Prowse, they can really, really um, affect this game. So I like to think that they can be comfortable against Everton in a 3-1 win. Yeah, look, I've got 2-1. Again, James, it's the central striker problem again. Um, I, I was, I'm was, i a big fan of Gianluca Scamacca, and when he came to West Ham, I really thought it would work out because he, he's capable of doing so many different things in so many different systems, but for whatever reason, it just didn't work out for West Ham. Mikel Antonio, it's over. Good athlete, good worker, 
um nice pro nice pro good good guy by all accounts it seems to be but not the guy who's going to get you into a conference league europa league level of football i know they've tried it with different strikers over time and we saw kudus mohammed kudus over the weekend maybe he's going to play that kind of nine and a half role maybe uh, as kind of just behind like second striker kind of role maybe but west ham need to find that guy up top i like suchek i like ward prowse i love lucas paqueta i love the defense emerson royale has come out and played really really well Again, Villa, as much as the scoreline dictated one thing, I don't think West Ham played as badly as the scoreline came out. I just don't think they're going to be potent enough uh, to, to truly dismantle teams that they can. And James Everton, yeah, the XG thing, I mean, it means they're creating goals, but what does it mean? Or creating chances, but what does it mean? Again, same old problem. We can't just keep relying on Dominic Calvert Lewin. He's not a clinical goal scorer. He's not going to pump numbers for He's you. He's not fit. And he's not fit any any of the time to be able to keep up with it. So again, two one. I see your three one. I think it could happen too. But but yeah, seems to be a pretty run of the mill result there for me. Brighton versus Fulham. Ran Man City a little close after a very hot start from Manchester City and Fulham again coming up against a very hot uh, Spurs side at the weekend. Both of us, James, three one. Is this a case of Brighton getting back to basics and just outplaying a team they're better than? Um, you yeah, like Jack, you said it right. They ran Man City close, and like they always, always look at Brighton, always looking for a, a, a bounce back game. You know, even against uh, Liverpool, Jack, they could have easily won that game. We'll talk about after like like after the heavy defeat to Aston Villa there, and I like to think back at home against a Fulham side who you're not sure what you're going to get right now. There isn't an established goal scorer. There isn't a player that you're going to be like, yeah, he's going to get us um, out of trouble there. And I like to think the way Brighton play, that they can really, really hurt this team. I might even go for more, but I'm going to sit on the fence and just like Jack, I'm not sitting on the fence, but I'm going to just keep it safe to me. Three ones is a safe bet. This, this, I think, is the result a lot of people will probably go for. This or 2-1, I'd say, are going to be the main two. And yeah, one team is just better run, better managed. Not by a lot, but by enough, especially with the home advantage that I think there's a clear winner here. James, very impressive with, uh, very impressed with Willian last night, by the way. I don't know if you caught the, the Spurs film game, but he looked kind of lively and kind of nice. Andres Pereira getting in and around. And, you know, I think we forget how nice Jao Palenia is. Anthony Robinson looked good too. So there, there are bright sparks for, for Fulham, but this Brighton team, we've given them so much praise this season and there's a really good reason for that, especially at home. I can only see this going one way. Um, James, one of the hottest teams in the world, one of the hottest teams in Europe this season, Aston Villa, Luton. I've gone for four, you've gone for three. Go ahead, you want to you talk on this one? It's a mismatch. I want to put 5-0 down, Jack. Okay. I'm gonna put five nil down because this Villa right now looks super hot. They look super confident in the. This is a game that you know your players like Ollie Watkins, you know Leon Bailey's, you know Mohamedou. Um, was it Diara that this? Um, um, sorry, Diaby. but like Diaby, Diaby. Diaby. Diaby that this on. Yeah, Diaby can really, really get there. Um, can really, really fill their boots and players like Douglas Louise there, who was bought, who's absolutely balling right now. Unai Emery has this team playing. Um, unbelievable football and to think where they were with Steven Gerrard and where they are right now and Jack the free flowing Jack as soon as they transition that ball over the top into like Diaby and Ollie Watkins and then the, the, Jack that quick transition and the players being able to be so dominant 1v1 the goal that um, uh, Leon Bailey and also Ollie Watkins score unbelievable Villa flying right now and I just can't see Luton really touching them yeah, Luton aren't going to do anything here. I, I, I do think that there will be that defensive stoutness from them for long enough that five might just be a little too rich for me. So I am going to stick with four. Could easily see this being three, though, as well. But James... I think one of the most underrated partnerships going at the moment is this Douglas Luiz uh, and Bubakar, I, th I believe it's Bubakar and Kamara uh, combo in, in the centre of midfield for, for Villa. Absolutely crushing it. Douglas Luiz, one of the mm -hmm. best in his position in the league and maybe in Europe as it stands. Come January, come the summer, expect some big bids for him from some of the, some of the bigger teams. And James, what's crazy about this Villa team not only are they talented going forward, James, they got depth. They brought Leon Bailey off the bench. I cannot imagine being an opposing fullback, being against Diaby, being against Ziolo, Zaniolo, being against somebody like that, Watkins for, for 60, 70 minutes. Yuri Tielemans. Yuri Tielemans off the bench too. And then you've got Leon Bailey running at you for, 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 for the last 20 minutes of the game. No, thank you. So Uno Emery knows what he's doing. Emi Martinez and that defensive structure, even without the likes of Tyrone Mings, is still pretty strong with the likes of Pau Torres coming in. Very difficult to find a fault in this Villa team and how they're going at the moment. James Liverpool won Merseyside derby in the early kickoff last weekend. Nottingham Forest coming to a town who obviously just came off that draw. 
kind of feels like there's only going to be one winner. Mo Salah at home, Liverpool, Anfield. This is only going one way, isn't it? Oh, you know, I can just see it. Just loads of high fives being like led by uh, Mo Salah from to, to Nunes to Jota to um, uh, you know who's uh, to Sir Bosley. Just everybody's getting a high five because every, everyone's chipping in. You know, this is this is a game that I can see loads of goals going in. The reason why I I have um the goal against them because I do believe not on the far to pack a threat. And in, in Jack to have the ability to hurt them with the players that you know I like I that like I mentioned on, on a, a number of occasions that they do have killers in there that can really 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 um, hurt them. So I like to think that um, they can get, snag a goal, but a goal won't be enough to me to um, um, to beat Liverpool because I just see Liverpool being so superior in my opinion, the best tact in the like in the league this season, just carrying on their rich vein of form, Jack. Yeah, especially at home. Very, very easy. I, I captained Mo Salah in fantasy football this week and nearly all the leagues I was in did like Haaland or Son or somebody like that. So very pleased with my decision. And again, at home again against a potentially weaker team, being not a City derby here, I can just see Liverpool absolutely balling out here. Very, very comfortable, especially against the Forest side who are going to walk into Anfield going, we don't expect to get anything here. James, I think quite easily, especially this week, quite easily game of the week, Manchester Derby, Manchester United just coming off beating, oh my God, Brett for Sheffield United last weekend and James in the Champions League, Andre Onana in the 97th minute saving a penalty from then having a Harry Maguire winner against Copenhagen in the Champions League. We tweeted about it a little bit. If you didn't think football was scripted, a Harry Maguire winner and Onana saving a penalty at Old Trafford after Sir Bobby Charlton passes away. Football scripted, I'm just telling you. <laughs> somebody writing something here. But they face a sterner test than FC Copenhagen, James. They've got Manchester City coming to town just off beating Brighton, turning that kind of lost streak of two around four Nil. I'm going to need you to explain this one because I have my rationale for two one. Four nil is kind of an um. Hey, bear in mind, this is not my prediction. This is Jed, and I'm going to back him this time. His 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 holds um um prediction. The reason why was that United are ass. And that's what he's going to say. They trash. They ass. Like that's what they're like. That's why he would say it. And you know, just not confident in in them. And just watching them having to really struggle to break down a Copenhagen team is Jack is worrying. You know, and just just overall, like I look at players like Rashford lacking in confidence. You know, players going in, in front of goal by Guy Nacho there. They not they don't quite have that uh, in front in front of goal. And the fact that you have to rely on Harry Maguire winning. Granted, it is a Manchester like Chester Derby. But the crowd's going to be up. The players are going to be up. They're going to be a bit more stern in the fence. But I think if Man City can get one, and especially Jack an early one. I like I seen it being a long night for Manchester United because as you can see, Jack. When it gets bad for Manchester United, it gets really bad. And you've seen it in the last few years. F what, 5-0 against Liverpool? 5-0 um, against Liverpool at Old Trafford. 6-3 six, uh, six against uh, Man City. 4-0 against Brentford. 7-0 at Anfield. When it gets bad, Jack, it all falls down and, and, and it can get ugly there. And maybe Jed is thinking it's going to get ugly again. So, 4-0 Man City. Um James, I, I like both our scorelines and I'll tell you why. Because I think both of our scorelines will happen, but it's dependent on one thing. Manchester United are basically leading, leading the league, I think, in possession one in the opponent's third and pressures and all these kinds of new gen stats that, that people love looking at at the moment. Manchester United are top in nearly all of these statistical categories. The one team I know are not going to be bullied off the ball are Manchester City regardless of whether at the Etihad or whether they're anywhere else. If Manchester United want to do this high press, we're coming at you, we're going to have you turn over the ball, high up the field thing. James, this is going to be 4-0 and this is going to be 4-0 quickly. I'm predicting a slightly slower approach, a little bit more of a step back. I think Eric Ten Hag is too smart to do that against Pep Guardiola, a returning Rodri and the kind of players that they have. I do think that this will be a bit more pragmatic. They'll be hard to break down. And James, what do we know about Manchester United? They're one of the most direct attacking teams right up there with Real Madrid in world football at the moment. If they're a bit more pragmatic, they don't do too much high pressing and they can try and catch Manchester City on the break. Manchester City, I believe, without Manuel Akanji now because of his red card as well, potentially an error out wide. I can just see them being a little bit more dangerous and it being a bit more of a bitty game, let's say. 
if they make it an emotional game, Manchester United could win this. But James, I see what you see. I don't see enough of a goal threat against this Manchester City side to be able to do anything. I just think 2-1, reasonably convincing, even though it might be close at the end. Guys at home, let me know what you think. James and I have put ourselves out here now. I've managed to reclaim a nice little three-point lead here, right? We need to see your predictions down in the comments section. Drop a like on the video if you like what you've seen. Hit subscribe if you're not already. Help us hit that target. James, do you want to finish this off here? Now, guys, if if let's say if I flop on some of this, it's Jed's fault. Yeah, he picked the majority of this, so blame I'm, it on Jed. <laughs> I'm holding yeah. James to it. It's James's name. But if it, it is good, then I'm a genius. Give me all, <laughs> give me all the recognition. But the match, just going back to Manchester United thing, I won't even be surprised if it's one all or nil nil. It right. might be a KG, uh, it, it might be a, a KG affair. But as I said, I just, I'm, I'm just going to back City there. But uh, Jack, I hate to destroy your um outro there, but guys, please. Few guys, few things like, share, subscribe, <laughs> comment. We want to see your comments, guys. Let us know your predictions. Don't give us, oh, he, oh, that was wrong. No, I want to see your prediction. So comment down your prediction. Let us know what you think, guys. And uh, me and Jack will see you in game 11.